Hi, this is Dr. Rusho. Let's discuss how prevalent is non-celiac gluten sensitivity, or said more simply, being gluten sensitive. And also, how commonly is being gluten sensitive associated to autoimmune conditions, and more specifically, we'll discuss thyroid autoimmunity. Now, we've discussed bits and pieces of this multi-center Italian study in the past, but I wanted to tie together a few of the more important aspects of this to help provide you with a better understanding of how prevalent gluten sensitivity is to help give you a more realistically um, calibrated expectation regarding do you have a problem with gluten or do you not have a problem with gluten. And, and unfortunately, I think we'll need to juxtapose what the science actually says, which will be is somewhat contrasting to what popular belief may have you thinking. So. Let me start by putting the abstract up here on the screen. An Italian prospective multi-center survey on patients suspected of having non-celiac gluten sensitivity. In this study, a, a group of physicians worked to ascertain if patients had gluten sensitivity or not. Th this was certainly not a group of physicians who were looking to disprove gluten sensitivity. In fact, they came up with a, a very comprehensive, roughly 60-point examination looking at everything from lab testing to physical examination to um, subjective questioning to really get a, a good accurate assessment. And let's go through some of their findings. 3% of the subjects were found to have non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Now this was in Italy and one of the most uh, you know, uh, quick rebukes to, to this comment are well, it, it's different in the United States. There's more glycophosphate use. Um, you know, there, there might be more uh, genetically modified wheat. Okay, so that, that's fine. That's certainly one argument. It's a speculative argument, so we want to be careful not to just take a speculative point that has no data to support it and uh, inflate that to mean something substantial. The same paper also cites that in the United States, the reported prevalence of non-celiac gluten sensitivity ranges from 0.6% up through 6%. So, maybe more common in the United States. Um, however, even if, even if the data in the United States was under-reporting at the 6% of the population, and let's say for argument's sake, if you wanted to be uh, as liberal with the uh, assignment or the prevalence of non-celiac gluten sensitivity as you could be. Let's say for argument's sakes it was 10% of the population. Uh, in this case, we have data showing 0.6 to 6%, but for argument's sake, let's say 10%. That is likely still far less than one has been led to believe according to things that they may read or hear on the internet. And this may not be anyone's fault. It, it may just be that the, the, the caution and the um, discerning language is often not used regarding conversations about gluten. We often see this very extreme language being used or very vague language being used, leaving the health consumer to fill in the gaps in terms of, okay, I've heard gluten can be very problematic for some people. It can cause thyroid autoimmunity, it can cause inflammation, it can cause leaky gut. But along with that narrative, very seldom do you have delivered the information educating you on the, the prevalence. So. Again, uh, to, to say it simply, if you go on the internet, perform some reading, you may easily be led to believe that the vast majority of people have a problem with gluten. And that is a stark contrast to what we're seeing reported in this study, where up to 6% of the population has a problem with gluten. So it's, it's very important to keep this in mind so that you can prevent yourself from being indoctrinated to think you have a problem with gluten in absence of any experiential data that supports that. Okay, continuing regarding the association to autoimmunity. So of this 3% in this study sample, by the way, this study sample was 12,225 patients, so it's a good sample size. 14% of the, of the 3% that had the gluten sensitivity, 14% of those patients had thyroid autoimmunity. Or I'm sorry, had autoimmunity in general of any type. Okay, so that's definitely significant. And of that 14%, 9% had thyroid autoimmunity. So yes, there, there is legitimacy to the claim that you can have non-celiac gluten sensitivity in association with autoimmune conditions, and thyroid seems to be the most prevalent of those. However, it's very important to keep in mind that this was 9%. Um, I routinely see patients who come in 
being led to believe that if you have thyroid autoimmunity, you can never have any gluten ever. And I am certainly all for being progressive and trying to find dietary methods of managing any condition. However, there, there is a cost to making overzealous dietary recommendations, which is the, the psychosocial difficulty that's accompanied by a strict 100% gluten-free diet, where I think a gluten-reduced diet would be a much more practical endeavor for most people. Yeah, you gain the benefit, and it seems that, uh, again, not everyone needs to be fully gluten-free as this study is supporting. Again, I'm happy to look at data showing that everyone with thyroid autoimmunity must be 100% gluten-free. But if you have an honest, objective look at the data, I, I don't think that's there. Yes, it is legitimate. Yes, people with autoimmunity have an increased risk of being gluten-sensitive, gluten sensitive, excuse me. But is it everyone? No, in fact, it's probably uh, the, the minority of people rather than the majority. Should you go through a gluten elimination and then reintroduction? 100%, I think that is totally a, a viable suggestion. However, it's important to have a reasonable outlook so that you don't self-indoctrinate yourself into thinking that you have a problem with gluten when you actually don't. You should be looking for a discernible reaction. And as this study also found, the majority, over 90% of patients upon gluten reintroduction will have a discernible symptomatic reaction within 24 hours. So to the argument that you may have this thyroid autoimmunity that, that's being fueled by gluten and it may never manifest symptomatically for weeks or months or years, I, I, again, I'm open, but I don't see great data to support that. In fact, I think that hurts more people than helps people because I see people come in who are orthorexic, they're afraid of food, um, and they're avoiding gluten strictly 100% of the time, even though when we have them go into a gluten reintroduction, they seem to be okay with gluten. Some people are very reactive, yes, but there's a number of people who actually feel better when they loosen up their diet a little bit and enjoy the ease of having less dietary restrictions. And that's actually a nice segue to the next point, which is that 30% of these non-celiac gluten-sensitive patients were able, able to resolve their symptoms after addressing another issue in the gut. So essentially, they had another problem in the gut that was making them look or appear like they had gluten sensitivity. This includes um, SIBO, FODMAP sensitivity, colitis, and again, this is likely why, uh, part of the reason why, that in the clinic we see people able to reintroduce gluten without much of a problem. Some people never had a problem to begin with and they were indoctrinated into thinking that they do. Other people had an underlying gut imbalance, if you will, that was leading to what looked like gluten sensitivity, but they actually were not. And when they cleaned up that problem, they were able to tolerate gluten. So hopefully this helps calibrate you more uh, proximal to what the data actually shows regarding gluten sensitivity. And if you're struggling with this, I would uh, offer you the protocol that I outlined in Healthy Gut, Healthy You, which is my book that walks you through a self-help plan it will help you navigate these uh, confusing waters of, of rectifying your gut health. Gluten sensitivity is definitely something to consider as part of your dietary approach, but not everyone has a problem with gluten, not everyone has to be 100% gluten free, and some people will have an underlying problem in the gut that's presenting what, as what looks like gluten sensitivity, but they um, actually are able to eat gluten at least to some degree once they rectify that problem. So again, hopefully this is helpful. This is Dr. Ruscio, and I hope this information helps you get healthy and get back to your life. Thanks.